Hey, aloha my internet family, how are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. A few weeks back, I walked you through the installation of the Build Tech Flex Plate system on my Monoprice Maker Select, uh, aka a Wanhao DI3. Uh, thought it was time that we get around to doing a review of the Build Tech Flex Plate system. So you ready? Let's do it. So without further ado, let's go directly into the review on this thing. Now I will say that BuildTac did provide the FlexPlate system to me at a reduced cost. It was not provided free of charge and I was not compensated for doing this review in any other way. So the opinions that I am sharing with you today are mine and mine alone. So with that said, when you receive your FlexPlate system, it comes with three items. It will come with the magnetic base plate, which you attach to the glass or to your bed surface. It will come with the flex plate itself. And it will come with a sheet of fresh clean build tack. And if you're interested in how simple the installation was, you can go look for the video up here, which will walk you through the quick process that it took to install this on the duplicator i3, aka Maker Select, aka Sharon. So on to my opinions and, and uh, thoughts on the FlexPlate system itself. The magnetics on here are very strong. And let's see if you can hear this. They are indeed quite strong. And they do hold the plate down very good to keep it from sliding all over. Um, I will caution you, though, that don't go taking your wallet out of your pocket and setting it onto the flex plate or else you may be looking for new credit cards. Um, because they will, they are very strong magnets and in fact, Miltech does give you the warning there, that strong magnetic field. If you are using it with a heated bed underneath, you'll also want to make sure that you let it cool down because this metal does get hot and I've made the mistake of trying to take it off once myself. Now, the magnets being so strong uh, does a great job of keeping the flex plate on and keeps it from sliding around. But a word of caution on that is that uh, it does take some force to lift it off or some strength or pulling to lift it off. So if you have a weaker spring system on your bed, you may need to um, look at being a little bit careful with that. Now, the biggest pro of, of this system, if you have a printer that does not have automatic bed compensation or something to adjust for uh, inaccuracies in your bed, once you get it dialed in and you don't have to constantly re-level your bed every time that you remove a print, that's the biggest asset of this. You just simply take it off, take it off the printer and remove it. Um, and it works very well for that. Now it does add a bit of height to your bed, uh, roughly seven millimeters or so, including the glass. So it is worth noting that and taking that into consideration that you may need to fabricate something to move your Z end stop uh, to allow for that additional height if that's something that your printer doesn't allow you to do automatically. Another thing worth pointing out is that the flex plate itself does have a bend radius and this may be different on larger uh, flex plates or like G-Max size or, or, or larger pieces than this 8x8 for the duplicator i3. But it makes it difficult to just pop off parts that are printed smaller than that, that flex or that bend radius. Now sometimes you can get just enough of a flex to at least free up a corner so that you can go back with a build tack spatula or some other scraper tool and still be able to remove your print. But it is worth noting that. Uh, now I didn't try it, but printing towards the edge of the bed may give you the ability to get a slightly tighter bend radius on it. The, the, the running cost for these, depending on 
where you buy it and the, of course the size of the printer that you need that I was seeing were roughly in the range of $75 to $100. So that begs the question of is it worth it for you? And I think it comes down to one of those things that each individual has to look at the system and make that decision on their own. In my case for the Duplicator i3 because I'm tired of leveling the bed every single print or every time I need to remove a print it is a worthy upgrade. Um, if you have something with a fixed bed or, or a printer you know, that is less sensitive to having the bed knocked out of alignment when you remove your prints, it may not be something that you necessarily need. Um, one thing that is kind of neat about this, and it's not necessarily an advertised bullet point by BuildTac, but you can purchase more than one flex plate, although it comes with one with a kit, you can buy additional ones. So if you wanted to run a print, carefully if it's hot, um, pop off the build plate, stick another one on there, restart your next print while the other one's cooling down and, and waiting to pop off, and then you can pop it off at your leisure. Uh, it is nice to have that option for you. And um, of course, while this is made for build tack, it is purely just a piece of metal that anything can be stuck to, if you read between the lines a little bit there. Um, if you're curious about experimenting with other surfaces besides build tack, um, this is an easy way to do that. So if you wanted to maybe try, um, I don't know, PEI sheet or uh, something else that you, could, you can stick onto that flex plate. Um, Again, I'm not necessarily advocating deviating from the build tack with which it's intended, but if you wanted to experiment a little bit, it is a nice system for tinkering. So with that said, it is a good product. Is it worth the price? That's something only that you can decide. But I hope this look at the build tack flex plate system gives you a better idea of what you're in for if you decide to go for it and helps you make a more informed decision. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.